Hi guys and welcome to the video. Today I will be going over the good and bad things I found within the World War II beta for Call of Duty. The private beta has been going on this weekend and it is about to conclude if it hasn't already by the time this video gets out. I just want to cover some key things I have either noticed or liked and disliked within the game. Starting off are the graphics. If I was to be asked if the game looked good, I would respond with yes, the visuals do look pretty good. But the graphics aren't really eye-catching at all. I know this is a World War II setting and everything isn't going to be bright and colorful like what Black Ops 2 and 3 kind of were. I'm glad for that. I like the rustic look and feel of the game, but the textures and details don't seem to really be there. It's as if they were creating a masterpiece and stopped short saying it's good enough as is. The last extra detail in the ground, trees, or buildings would have really captured an amazing work of art. More details all around would have been good for me, but the visuals are nice in itself. I don't want to say the graphics and details has taken a step backwards, but it doesn't seem to have improved much since Advanced warfare. Next is the lack of customization. I cannot say for sure how much we will be able to customize our characters and weapons, but the create a class system has given me a bunch of mixed feelings. I enjoy the simplistic design of not having to weigh one perk or wild card versus another, and choosing what to use my last pick 10 slot on when I'm not sure if I even need it is finally gone. But with this new system, you have almost no control over the perk selection. If you would like to use a certain perk for a certain weapon, you would have to make that weapon under a particular division. But then you're not able to have one perk from two different divisions. So infantry and airborne division for example. The second level gives me a third primary attachment under the infantry and sprint for long distances under the airborne division. There is no way to use both perks under one class setup so you will need to decide if you want extra attachments or longer sprint. Some guns, especially assault rifles, I would recommend having three attachments on. But unlimited sprint is gone again in this game so if you would like to rush or just be quick in general you should really consider the airborne division. And then you would need to be level 4 in a division to have all three perks accessible to you. In total there are 5 perks or upgrades in each division but but the first tier is catered to a particular weapon category and then the last is a special weapon of that weapon category. So in total there are only three perks per division that can be used on any type of weapon. I mentioned no unlimited sprint and that is probably my third breath with this game. Everyone is sick of advanced movement and rightfully so, but I do not agree with taking away unlimited sprint. You could make the case that it's more realistic, but then I can make the case that it's breaking my thumbstick trying to sprint every time my character slows down. In my opinion, I feel it's been removed just to make it a perk. So what is the actual harm in unlimited sprint? It is not as if the character runs very fast anyway, and there are no exosuits or advanced movement to help me get around the map any quicker. I am really not a fan of constantly pressing the L3 button, so it doesn't take me an eternity to get anywhere across the map. I found not too many things wrong in this beta, so that is pretty much it for the bad. Not trying to be biased to Call of Duty at all, but this game was pretty refreshing and enjoying. If you feel something was bad I left out, please let me know in the comments. I probably did leave something out knowing me, but... I think I really covered everything. First I want to begin with the time to kill because that is a huge factor and usually a huge debate within the Call of Duty games. The time to kill in this game was fast but manageable. You do die somewhat quick in this game which adds a bit to the realism aspect of it but not too quickly. This is not like Ghost where if someone sees you first you die. Usually you have a chance to defend yourself and possibly turn on the person shooting you. If they potato a couple shots, you have the opportunity to capitalize, but the window to do so is pretty small. Usually if you run close to an enemy almost face to face, of course the first person to get shot usually will die, but if there is a bit of a distance where aim counts, whoever has a better aim wins. I have been turned on a couple of times and I have turned on people a few times, so the time to kill shouldn't be that big of a problem. I would say Sledgehammer could decrease the time to kill just a smidge, but I have no complaints if it stays the same. Now for the weapons, they sound and feel beautiful. The past few games have produced many pea shooters or just guns that felt as if they were shooting an airsoft gun. I know these guns are guns that actually existed, but many of the weapons in the last few games are models of older weapons but felt more like toy guns compared to actual ones. Many people will not really think of the feel and sounds of guns in the games, but for some reason I notice it and it stands out a lot for me. Anyways, the guns do seem to be well balanced. I don't feel that one really stood out as the clear best gun in the game like many Call of Duty games have. They were all pretty viable and all were useful in fulfilling their roles. Like I said, to me, not one really stood out as the best gun. Recoil even seemed to actually exist in this game and makes sense. Also, I didn't feel as if I was getting cross-mapped by SMGs or sprayed down close quarters by ARs and LMGs. 
but I did notice the quick scopers making their presence known. They weren't overly annoying like in Black Ops 2, but they were out there. And the pistols are decent, at least the P08 that I used. At first, I couldn't get any kills with it, but playing it with it more, I was able to go positive using only that pistol. Of course, I wouldn't say it could replace any primary weapon, but it is a decent viable option in a sticky situation. And something else I want to talk about is the connection and maps. For the beta, this is probably one of the more stable connections I've played on. There were no issues with lag or getting kicked out of games. Hit registration wasn't even a problem. When I shoot someone, it registered. Call of Duty has had many issues with hit registration and I detected few if not any at all in this beta. And the map layouts were pretty good overall I would say. In the beginning I was not a fan of the Ardenese Forest, but it kind of slowly grew on me. I'm not a huge fan of it still, but I can somewhat enjoy it. The only thing I don't enjoy are the number of directions I have to look so I don't get shot. There are a couple areas in most of the maps where this exists and it's annoying sometimes having to look three or four different ways. I found myself getting shot in the back a lot, mainly though it was just in the first day of the beta. I'm adding maps as a good thing because I believe with no one knowing any of the maps on the first day, the flow of how they were supposed to work was kind of off. So I can't really say that they were a bad thing. I'm sure when the game comes out, more people will know the maps a little bit better and the flow will go a lot smoother. You probably won't get flanked from three different directions as much and things actually end up being more predictable for the more experienced players. I do want to note that spawns were not really an issue in the maps that we played. I have only encountered a handful of times where I spawned directly in front or near an enemy. This was almost non-existent though, so spawns actually worked pretty nicely. I can't say how they will work in game modes like Capture the Flag, which is notorious for wacky spawns, but from the other game modes, spawns don't seem to be much of a problem. And there was only one time on the map Gibraltar where I was somewhat spawn trapped for about a minute in domination. It wasn't something that would have made me rage quit, but I didn't notice it nonetheless. Other than that, everything was fine. They even brought that wall banging, which I was kind of surprised to get killed by. And the last thing I want to touch on are score streaks. In the beta, only 7 were available, and of course we had the classics like a UAV, Care Package, Stray Front, and Trinity Rocket. They are all given different names in this game besides the Care Package, but most of the score streaks are actually useful without being overpowered. So if you get the score streaks, you will be able to rack up some kills, just don't expect to completely decimate the enemy. And on one score streak, the fighter pilot, which is essentially a straight run with you in the cockpit of a lone plane, is pretty weak in my opinion. Compared to past games where there are about 5-10 to 10 planes going by and they sometimes double back around in some games, the one in this game doesn't seem very satisfying. Yes, there is a cool little perk in being in control of a gun on a plane, but there is only one and it doesn't seem to do much damage. I have been hit by this at least on two occasions and have lived both times, and plus the strafe run is very short. I don't believe it even covers the entire map. But that is all I really have to say. In my opinion, this will be a very good Call of Duty game, something most people will enjoy. Just from the beta, I enjoy the game a lot. There has been far fewer times that I've raged, and there seems to be less BS involved in this game. Keep in mind, this is just the beta, so some of the things that I mentioned that are negative could possibly change by the time the actual release of the game come out. But as it stands, I'm kind of excited for it, and I hope you guys give it a try. But that's all for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe for more videos. I will try to cover some more things within Call of Duty World War II. Um, but if you believe that there was something I forgot to touch on, please comment it down below. And I think that's about it, so bye.